Peace, everyone. I would just like to say and respond to the young man, we are happy to say true Americanism, Christianity, and true Judaism, democracy, and brotherhood are synonymous. In the actuated words of expression, we are the personal demonstration of it according to original and a quite often rehearsed saying here in America, I will show you better than I can tell you. I have declared, I will preach Christ in word, but more so in deed and in action. I will put my spirit in the people and cause them to walk in my statutes. My true following are walking in my statutes. They are living epistles seen and read by men. Therefore, I say to you and to all our fellow citizens of this great republic, read them. Peace, everyone. Here we all are again. There I sit and stand. I'm unifying more effectively with the children of men so that they all might be, even as I am, as far as blessings are concerned. I thought to call your attention to the fact that as in Panama, so in all other countries where my name is revered, where they recognize my presence, I am just as operative and expressive as I am where I am here person. I have declared it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord God of hope. And you have heard it, you have preached it, a good many of you, you have read it otherwise. But you do not stop to consider God is operative and expressive universally. And God by nature is impersonal. Being impersonal by nature, he does not have to have a personality. He is not confined to individuality. Therefore, I say, wheresoever you may be, if you recognize the actual presence of God and are fanatical enough and radical enough to conscientiously and sincerely believe it, 
God's presence will be with you and will express itself effectively, universally, as it does right here where I am present. I brought out that little motto as a statement and as a declaration, not merely as a motto for the melody or rhythm thereof, but because it's a reality. I decide to see every one of you under the sound of my voice tonight free from all adverse and undesirable conditions and completely free from obstruction, barriers, and all afflictions of every kind. Well, this cause, I call your attention to one composition as though a fairy tale, and yet it's logical, for well, I have actually fulfilled it, where God, in the name of a Kobo, say to the shepherd, the one of whom has found a flower on the mountainside. And that flower was the key flower. It unlocks all bars and shut doors. And as the door of the hidden treasure was open, and he walked down in the underground terminal as it could have been termed. Underground treasure. There he saw a peculiar looking man. God in the expression in an illustrated personal expression of a man that was commonly known as a caveman. He told him to take all you want, but don't forget the best. I will not go into the full detail of the mystery of the illustration and parable of it tonight, but I am calling your attention to the fact to convince you, if you can convince yourself, God is present with you in reality. <laughs> the mission of Christ to the children of men. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God is with us. To our ecclesiastical world. I would like to say, God is with us. That's the commission of Christ. In other words, it was the commission of the disciples to preach and those of the ecclesiastical world, clergymen should preach the doctrine of God's presence wheresoever you are. Yeah. <laughs> then I say, if you are conscious of God's presence, 
all of your problems are solved once and for him. That's what I'm talking about. So long as you remain conscious of God's presence and will not falter and will not fear. The key flower opened the door as an illustrated parable of Simon when he said to Jesus the Christ, I say that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Simon, I give you the keys of the kingdom. That which thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And that which thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The consciousness of God's presence was the commission of all of the Christian ministers of the world. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God is with him. Preach the presence of God and convince yourself God is actually present and not just a supposition. God to you will be a living reality and will solve all your problems and will adjust matters satisfactorily. You will no longer live in wants, lacks, and limitations. You will be able to say, as David said in the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not mourn. Now I give you this key. For it is impersonal and it is free. If you can take this key and accept of it as a reality and get it in your subconsciousness, yea, in your heart and in your mind, and declare even as it is. The spirit of the consciousness of the presence of God is the source of all supply and it will satisfy every good desire. It may sound foolish. I've known some of our visiting guests from time to time to come here critically and endeavor to criticize and make fun. They better be making fun of the misery and the poverty like wants and limitations they shall undergo. But I have declared, not only as a composition, but as a conviction, and the convictions of millions of others, the spirit of the consciousness of the presence of God is the source of all supply, and it can and it will, as it does, satisfy every good desire.
not just to say it, but believe it in all sincerity. I'm experiencing <laughs> Can you not see? The economic problems are solved as far as we are concerned. Over and above all opposition, God has solved your economic problem, has been present with you. God has solved your political problem, has solved your social problem, has solved your racial problem. Oh, has established your voice in the land of the living and is proven the mastery over all situations. <laughs> now, if you, my fellow citizens, hearers and friends, and even those of my following who are not conscious of my actual presence at all times can and will but confess yourselves to that effect. You will find matters not where you are, the abundance of the food, of the consciousness of good no space will be vacant of the fullness arrow. God's presence, as it moved out upon the water in the beginning of the creation, without flesh, body, blood, and bone, at that time, according to the historian, God was invisible, intangible. God at that time was just spirit and spirit alone. But God spoke into outer expression, light. And it came forth into expression. Let there be light, and there was light. And this, the earth being void and without form, God said, Let dry land appear. Dry land came forth into materialization and into outer expression, from which, in other words, from it, God formed man out of that dry land that had been invisible, intangible, impractical. Non profitable. In other words, void and without form. Then God spoke it into actuality and into servitude. For there would be humanity that was to come. <laughs> the earth brought forth vegetation. And fruit of its own kind after the seeds that God had sown. So then I say, without going so far into the details of the mystery, be conscious of God's actual presence. 
and take God along with you. Whatsoever you are. And the spirit of the consciousness of the presence of God will be the source of all supply and will satisfy your every desire. Not just merely as a composition. Not just merely as a motto for your consideration, but for your conscious recognition and for the realization a million God's presence will automatically supply you in the abundance of the fullness because God is creative by nature and operative and expressive automatically. Aren't you glad? The material to me what man may think or say. God's presence will satisfy every good desire. And that was the commission by which the clergyman of the Christian world should have been preaching from the time they recognized Christ as the Redeemer and the Savior made. They should have been preaching until now. God's actual presence among them. Oh, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which has been interpreted, God is with us. God has been with you all along and all the time. Was written of me. He was in the world and the world was made by him. But the world knew him not. Take these thoughts to consideration and barriers of bodies and personages and individuals, personalities and individualities will not be your obstruction. You will actually behold the reality of God's actual presence transcending all barriers and all obstruction, all limitations, then you will be able to live in the one eternal here and now with victory on your side. Take these thoughts to consideration. And realize God is rich and all you need. It's an often rehearsed quotation which says, the name of God is a strong tower, and the righteous run therein and is safe. You're going to be safe from all hurt, from all harm, and from all danger. And if you live this teaching and take me along with you, well, if you don't want to say me, take me. Uh, take God along with you. And 
be conscious of God's presence, you will never have a blowout on your car. You will never have a disappointment. You will never have a failure. Aren't you glad? Blowouts will not come on your time or through your time. Why should you have any trouble if God is with you? Now live in the consciousness of God's presence. And let the very consciousness of God's presence be your ever protection from all hurt, from all harm, and from all danger. God will be with you now, henceforth, and forever. I heard one say, Two hold up men came in and tried to hold us, hold me up. I was there all alone at the garage, all alone. Tried to hold me up. And he whipped out a gun and flashed it in my face and said, Stick him up. The brother said, I say, Peace. And he fled the same as if it had, would have been bombshells after. <laughs> One of the men tried to beat him down, tried to stock him with, uh, with a club like a nice day, something of that sort. But as true followers of mine will not fight the brother for any cause whatsoever. <laughs> as he was trying to strike him on the head, he held up his hand like that and say, peace, and the man left. <laughs> They did not get a dime. For if the Lord keeps not the house, the watches in vain. God is in the midst of you. And when you are conscious of God's actual presence, he will protect you automatically and will adjust matters satisfactorily give you the victory over all adverse and undesirable conditions. And you will have the victory, not only locally or individually, but you will have international victory in keeping with the composition. <laughs> I need not say more. I just thought to call your attention to the significance of God's actual presence. Be conscious of God's presence. You do not have to uh, measure me as God or God as me. God shapes and fashions himself as he pleases. <laughs> but as I have long since declared, and I redeclare the same, it's a matter of impossibility for me to lose if I would allow all visible bodies of the children of men and even the body of God himself or his own to go in oblivion. I'm the same today, yesterday, and throughout all eternity 
it's a matter of impossibility for me to lose anything. Aren't you glad? And I say, live in this recognition and take me along with you. And I will be your victory now henceforth and forever for the spirit of the consciousness of the presence of God is the source of all supply. You can be bountifully and abundantly supplied until your heart and mind and desires are completely satisfied. Aren't you glad? <laughs> I thought to call your attention to the fact and slightly sketch at the shepherd and the Kobo saying, take all you want, but don't forget to bear. Showing you and assuring you if you do not forget to bear and take God along with you in consciousness as it is right here so will it be there where you are if you be the same as we are and live soberly, righteously, unselfishly, democratically, evangelically, and refuse to be divisible. When you are divided, you bring in destruction upon yourself. But together we stand. Stand consolidated together. Not will be able to stand against us. For it is written, Oh, the people is one. And they all have one language. And this they began to do. Now nothing will be restrained from them to do that which they have imagined to do. Genesis 11. I think.